Hey, Nelson Alcoholic Addict. Not my real name. That is a fake name that I use here at my sober newsletter, LOL Sober. I saw Matthew Perry uh, out on the book tour recently, hyping his new book, um, and he seemed to be well on the road to recovery. Um, he, you know, most people probably know this. He was a star of uh, iconic TV show, Friends. Also suffered from major addiction issues over the years. Really hampered his career. Um, the book is called Friends, Lovers, and the Big Terrible Thing, a memoir. I don't think I will buy the book myself, um, but it sounds like an interesting window into addiction and sobriety. Personally, I will say I did not like that um, the book takes a few pretty mean swipes at Keanu Reeves, who has a 100% approval rating at my house. He will not be bad under any circumstances, so I refuse to support his book. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I just don't care that much about, um, you know, reading about Matthew Perry's life. But man, his story did touch me as he talked about it on this book tour. It's a brutal story. It's a powerful story about sobriety and addiction. And he talked about having had more than 10 surgeries and going to rehab at least 10 times. And he says he's been to at least 6,000 12-step meetings in 20 years uh, that's a lot of, a lot of trying to get sober, you know, and he says he's clean and sober these days after battles, long battles, both alcohol and opiates over the past quarter century. And, um, in the interview I saw, he told a wild story to Bill Maher on his HBO show about going to open houses in Hollywood and, uh, faking that he was interested in the house and then going upstairs and raiding medicine cabinets and, Bill Maher was just like blown away <laughs> during the show. And I found myself going like, wait, like I've done worse. And by the way, I hear stuff like that at other 12 steps. Every other 12 step meeting has somebody talking about something worse. Why are you so stunned by this story? But, you know, apparently Bill Maher is like a normal person and I'm not, you know, I guess um, it's a part of my world every day to hear these wild tales of people doing things to keep their addiction going and so it starts to get a little normalized and it's definitely not normal when I step back and think about it. It was helpful to see a normal person hear a story like that and process that information and then their jaw hits the floor because at meetings everybody kind of giggles and goes oh yeah yeah that makes sense. My stories are they're funny now and they're mind-blowing now but that's only because I processed the shame of what was pretty shameful behavior, and I left that behind me. He also, in that HBO interview, told a story about basically his colon exploded from years of opiate abuse. And he said, you know, when he, when he woke up from surgery and he was in tremendous pain from the colon surgery that was caused by opiate abuse, you know what he wanted? He wanted opiates. <laughs> Yep, addiction is a real bastard of a disease, isn't it? That story was a great reminder to me about the physical damage that alcohol and drugs did to my body, and it gave me a tremendous sense of gratitude. Sometimes I forget, you know, my body bounced back. A lot of our bodies bounce back, and they probably shouldn't. You know, we the amount that the, the friends of mine in sobriety that I know, the amount they drank and drugged over the years could have died many times, you know, but as far as I know, I have no liver damage, no brain damage, although that's debatable, I guess, uh, and no, no exploding colon, which is good. <laughs> you never want an exploding colon. Um, and I think, in fact, at this point in my life, I might be in the best shape that I've ever been in since, since I turned, you know, since I became an adult. And as, as they discussed on the show that night, Bill Maher and Matthew Perry, it's a testament to my body's ability to recover at the same time as my mind and my spirit recover. Because I don't think Matthew Perry, if he kept drinking and drugging, I, I think it would end really badly. Same with me. Uh, but my body healed up, you know. And that helped me. I said a little prayer that night of thank you to my higher power, too. Because I easily could have a bad liver or kidneys or 10 other ailments due, due to severe alcohol and drug abuse. And that's not something, I mean, when was the last time I checked my own heart to make sure it was okay? Like I, it's just, it's out of my control. Um, 
And I don't have any of those ailments. So, you know, thank you, higher power, for taking care of my lungs and liver and everything else. The other thing that jumped out at me was the sheer math of Perry's addiction. I'm not going to get into the 6,000 meetings number because I'm calling bullshit on that one a little bit. That that comes out to about 300 meetings a year for 20 years straight with long periods of active addiction in those 20 years uh, because he's not sober. He has not been sober for 20 years. I forget what he said, how long he's been sober for, but he had stretches of not being sober in that time. So 300 meetings a year for 20 years, that number feels a little inflated to me, but listen, I'm not going to fact check uh, Chandler Bing's book. <laughs> I don't need to, I don't need to do that. I will, however, talk about the surgeries and the treatment centers though, because having 10 to 15 surgeries and going to rehab 10 to 15 times, those are, that's, uh, it's among the highest numbers I've ever heard. That's a lot. That's a lot of, uh, nudging along the way that maybe he has a problem. Um, but I, but I also can't say, I th- I would say like those are Guinness world records or anything. I've, I've had a bunch of surgeries in my life and I've met lots of people who needed somewhere, you know, around eight, nine, ten trips to treatment facilities. Um, I don't really have a point here other than the idea got it got hammered home to me again that it takes what it takes to get sober. There's no like once you get the five rehab trips, that's when it all clicks every time. It's just like no guarantee. Sometimes it's one trip to a psychiatric hospital and somebody's done. Sometimes it's one trip to rehab at night, but they need 90 days in jail then afterwards too. Sometimes it's five surgeries and one divorce. You know, you just don't know. I need to remember that next time somebody new is struggling and I'm pulling my hair out trying to help them. Their their bottom is their bottom. I know what mine was. That's all that matters. I know mine, what 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 it's been so far, you know, um, so there, somebody else's bottom is their bottom, and hopefully it's not as high as the guy who played Chandler Bing, but if so, you know, at least now Matthew Perry is somebody I can point to and say it's a good example of why you just never stop trying. Thanks for letting me share.